Hello, CPAC. It is great to be back at the premier gathering of conservatives in the United States of America. You know, this is the ninth time I've had the privilege to address CPAC. Thanks to all of you and the confidence of our new president, this is the first time I'm here as Vice President of the United States of America. Because of all of you, because of your hard work and your support and your prayers, my family and I have the privilege to serve. And more importantly, because of all of you, my friend Donald Trump is the 45th President of the United States of America. You know, you know the President and I have become good friends. It's the greatest privilege of my life to be Vice President to a leader of such conviction, vision, and courage. Now, some people have remarked that we're a little bit different. <laughs> you know, I'm a small-town guy. He's big city. I'm Midwest. He's Manhattan Island. <laughs> he's known for his bigger-than-life personality, his charm, and his charisma, and I'm like, not. <laughs> You know, as I said at the Republican convention, I guess he was just looking to balance the ticket. <laughs> but all kidding aside, when President Trump asked me to join him on the ticket, I said yes in a heartbeat. Because you have elected a man for president who never quits, he never backs down, he is a fighter, he is a winner, and I promise you he will never stop fighting until we make America great again. You know, from the outset, our president reminded me of somebody else, a man who inspired me to actually join the cause of conservatism nearly 40 years ago, President Ronald Reagan. I believe President Trump has given voice to the aspirations and frustrations of the American people like no leader since Reagan. I just knew our new president would reignite our cause and renew it in our own day. And he did just that. President Trump won a historic victory all across the United States of America. Think about it. 30 out of 50 states, including states that no Republican had carried in a generation, President Donald Trump turned the blue wall red. And you know what? The establishment never saw it coming. I mean, the media, the elites, the insiders, everybody else who profits off preserving the status quo, they dismissed our president every step of the way. And in dismissing him, they, they also dismissed millions of the hardworking, forgotten men and women who make this country great. And worse yet, they're still trying to dismiss him. They're still trying to dismiss all of us. What they should have learned on Election Day is this is not a government of the elites, by the media, or for the establishment. What November 8th showed, even if they didn't listen, is that this is still government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And last November, the American people rose up and demanded a safer America, a more prosperous America, and a great America again. That's why the American people elected Donald Trump as President of the United States of America, and President Donald Trump is already delivering for the American people.
So I'm here today because of all of you and because of this conservative movement. And on behalf of the President, from the bottom of my heart, let me say thank you. Thank you for your hard work and your commitment to our cause. But our fight didn't end on November the 8th. We won the day, but make no mistake about it, the harder work, the most important work, now lies ahead. The fight goes on. So let me make you a promise. President Trump will fight for you every single day. <laughs> President Trump is a man of his word, and we're keeping the promises he made to the American people. Over at the White House, I like to say we're in the promise-keeping business these days. You know, when President Trump asked me to chair the transition, he looked at me and just said, Mike, just get me the best. <laughs> and how about that Attorney General Jeff Sessions? <laughs> how about Jim Mad Dog Mattis over at Defense? <laughs> how about Dr. Ben Carson at Housing and Urban Development? Just to name a few, I could go on and name every single one of them, and I'm proud to stand with each one of you folks. This is the A-Team. I say with great confidence, knowing the men and women that he's assembled around it, President Trump has assembled the strongest conservative cabinet in my lifetime, bar none. With this team, we as conservatives have an opportunity that only comes around every few generations, or maybe just once in a lifetime. And my friends, this is our time. This is the chance we've worked so hard for so long to see. This is a time to prove again that our answers are the right answers for America. A strong military, more jobs, less taxes, respect for the Constitution and the values that have made America great, and a deep and abiding faith in the goodness of the American people. You know, history will attest, every time America produces a leader who builds on this firm foundation, our nation reaches heights that once seemed unreachable. And let me assure you, President Donald Trump is such a leader. And under his leadership, we are making America great again. He's putting America first and putting Americans back to work already. He's rebuilding the military and putting our enemies on notice. He's supporting law enforcement and ending illegal immigration once and for all. He's rolling back big government and slashing through red tape. He's upholding the Constitution, restoring the culture of life, and President Donald Trump is leading the fight to repeal and replace Obamacare. And let me assure you, America's Obamacare nightmare is about to end. You know, despite the best efforts of liberal activists at town halls around the country, the American people know better. Obamacare has failed, and Obamacare must go. This failed law is crippling the American economy and crushing the American people. Talk about your fake news, folks. Just look at all the promises liberals made about Obamacare. 
Remember, they told us the cost of insurance would go down. They told us if you like your doctor, you can keep him. They told us if you like your health plan, you can keep it. And now we all know the truth. Today, Americans are paying $3,000 more a year on average for their health insurance. Last year, premiums skyrocketed by a stunning 25%. Millions have lost their plans and lost their doctors. Higher costs, fewer choices, worse care. That's Obamacare. <laughs> and if that weren't bad enough, Obamacare is also a job killer, and everybody in America knows it. Well, we're about to change all that by repealing Obamacare once and for all, eliminating its mandates, its taxes, and its intrusion into your business and into your lives. And best of all, with President Trump's leadership, Obamacare is going to be replaced with something that actually works, something that's built on freedom and individual responsibility. President Trump and I want every American to have access to quality and affordable health insurance, which is why we're designing a better law that lowers the cost of health insurance without growing the size of government. We're going to let Americans purchase health insurance across state lines, the way you buy your life insurance, the way you buy your car insurance. We're going to make sure that Americans with pre-existing conditions have access to health insurance and the security they need, and we're going to give states the freedom and flexibility to take care of the least fortunate in the best way that will work in their state and in their community. You know, despite all the fear-mongering from the left, make no mistake about it, we'll have an orderly transition to a better health care system that finally puts the American people first. And after we repeal and replace Obamacare, we're going to do a whole lot more. We're going to start off by rebuilding the American military. We'll restore the arsenal of democracy. We'll provide our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard with the resources and training they need to accomplish their mission and come home safe. And we will hunt down and destroy ISIS at its source so it can no longer threaten our nation or our families. We're going to get this economy moving again by cutting taxes for working families, small businesses, and family farms. We're going to keep rolling back job-killing regulations, and we're going to rescind unconstitutional executive orders signed by Barack Obama. And under President Trump's leadership, we're going to continue to rein in wasteful government spending and restore fiscal responsibility to Washington, D.C. We'll enact real education reform that gives families more choices. It recognizes that education is a state and local function. And under President Donald Trump, no state will ever be forced to adopt the Common Core. I'm proud to stand with a president who's doing all of this and more. And I'm proud to stand with a president who stands with our most cherished ally, the Jewish State of Israel. Israel's fight is our fight. Her cause is our cause. Her values are our values. And under President Trump, America will stand with Israel. And maybe most of all, maybe most of all, I'm grateful and honored to serve with a president who will uphold our Constitution and the sanctity of human life. Because of President Donald Trump, life is winning in America again. 
Last month, he reinstated the Mexico City policy preventing foreign aid from funding organizations that promote or perform abortions, and we will make the Hyde Amendment permanent American law. And when it comes to the highest court in the land, in Judge Neil Gorsuch, President Trump kept his word to nominate a new justice to the Supreme Court who will uphold our Constitution and all the God-given liberties enshrined in it in the tradition of the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia. Men and women of the conservative movement, this is our time. And I promise you, the President and I will work our hearts out to make America safe again, to make America prosperous again. But the success of our movement, and more importantly, the success of our country, depends as much on all of you as it does on us. We must. We must, all of us, rise to the challenge before us, tomorrow and every day thereafter. The other side is not sitting idle, and their allies in the media are more than willing to amplify their defense of the failed status quo every single day. Now more than ever, as we did before when this movement won back the Congress in 2010 and won back the Congress, or the, won back the White House in 2016, we got to do what we did before. We got to mobilize. We got to march forward as if it's the most important time in the history of our movement, because it is. <laughs> Men and women of this movement, there is no time like the present. So make your voices heard in town halls with your family and your friends on the internet and in social media, and in all those places where common sense, conservative messages are most desperately needed, because this is our time. From this day forward, to make America great again, President Trump and I need every ounce of your energy and enthusiasm, your conviction, your courage, your passion. And we need one more thing, if you're inclined. We need your prayers. Now, last month, I, I took my oath of office, administered by the great Justice Clarence Thomas. You know, for this grandson of an Irish immigrant, it's hard to describe the privilege that I and my family felt that day. I put my left hand on, on a Bible that was actually used by the 40th President of the United States back in January of 1981. But what was uncanny about that moment is I, I opened that Bible to the verse that he had it open to on that day. And it happened to be the very same verse that I most often quoted as I campaigned across this country on behalf of our new president. In the days ahead, as we work and as we labor, as we advance this cause to restore our country, we, I think, would do well to remember those ancient words. That if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray, he'll do like he's always done. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land, this one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
for reflecting on those timeless truths and the work that we have to do. My fellow Americans, it's time. But I'm confident. I'm confident with your help and with God's help. And with President Donald Trump in the White House, I know the best days for America are yet to come. Let's get to work. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America.